<clears throat> what up, what up, what up, what up, friends and family? I appreciate y'all for continuing to rock with me. It is Wednesday night, and I just got back from the Pistons game. Shout out to shout out to Indiana. Shout out to the Indiana Pacers. Um really cool team. Probably one of the coolest teams that I didn't ran into since I've been sitting uh and, and doing what we do over at uh, LCA, Little Caesars Arena. What's happening, friends and family? I see my dog Kojak in the building. Glow, what up, though? Your car spaces, a low so way, Thrax. Doll on Ramadan. The Junior Largi, Mary Elizo. Um, OG and Freezy about to cook up a good one tonight. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't be knowing what I'm going to say before I say it. I don't pre-plan it. Uh, Miss Lady J is in the building, says, stay ready, play a pizzle. I appreciate you. I'm technically Tim. KL, what up, though? IROC619 says, let's get it. Man, I don't want to talk about who won Car Concierge. Messi, what up, though? Trini Life, I appreciate you. Thank you to everybody that be tapping in. It's 40% that think that the kid is theirs. Nope, says, got it all day, 313. Yo, let me give a shout out to uh, LS. What's happening, baby? Bird, what's the word? Brick Dog, Wendell Kilgore. I appreciate you. Let me give a shout out to the Indianapolis Pacers. Um, good dudes. Uh, Rick Carlisle is a really good dude. He actually came up and, and kicked it. <laughs> he was like, man, I'm glad you're here. You got my guys up today because, you know, I'll be talking big trash. Big trash. Uh, I, I kicked it with Halliburton for about a good 20 minutes sitting on the sideline. Yeah, them boys is cool. So shout out to all of them. Uh, shout out to my man. I forgot what his name was, but he actually got a birthday today. So shout out to him. I didn't even know it was his birthday until I was about to leave. So I left in the beginning of the fourth quarter, and we got it in. And uh, I wound up sitting next to the bench today or next to, next to the team. So... You know how that go. I was sitting there the whole time going back and forth. I had this on. You know, you know what's so funny? These young dudes don't don't nothing. They don't know nothing about freshness. But shout out to Obi Toppin. Obi Toppin know what it is. Um, they don't know nothing about it. They don't know nothing about it. Let me give uh, one more shout out before we get started with the show. I want to give a negative shout out. How do you give a negative shout out? I want to give a negative shout out to not Rick Carlisle, the head coach of the Indianapolis Pacers, but I want to give a negative shout out to some of the coaches that was on the bench of the Indianapolis Pacers that wanted to go back and forth, insert themselves into the conversations that I was having with the players. Man, stop it. Stop it, bro. Y'all not one of them going to come up and say, hey, man, you can't go back and forth. You can't talk back and forth with the coach. Man, we'll tell the coaches stop inserting themselves into the conversation. You know what I'm saying? But shout out to Halliburton. Uh, saving that dude his job. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> and let me give a shout out to Rita, too, or whoever it is that come with me to the games, because I'm going to just tell y'all, if y'all I, – I talk big trash. Like, I talk big junk at the games. Big, big trash. And uh, if y'all the type of person that's apprehensive or, you know, if you're more of the quiet type of stuff, I might embarrass you. I might embarrass you because I, I'm, I'm one of the fans that like to get up and I like to root the team on and talk about, hey, don't get a ball to him because he going to break it every time. It's going left. I got the over-under on that one over there and all of that. Like, I talk big trash, big, big trash at the game. So shout out to everybody that come with me to the games. Because uh, everybody else, like a lot of people that sit around the floor, they act stuffy until I start talking and they want to get some courage. You know what I'm saying? But shout out to everybody that's sitting on the floor because they be all conservative and chilling, man. I, I get up to go to the – if I'm going to go to the game, I'm going to the game. If I go to the game, I'm going to the game. So, yeah, man. Yeah, man. Let's, let's, let's get to it. Y'all ready to get to the show? I do be heckling on the sidelines. And everybody be in the back. I was going back and forth. And shout out to the Indiana fans. All of them hicks that was sitting behind me. I went off on them too. I told one lady, I said, listen, your teeth too yellow to talk to me. 
Yo teeth is too yellow to talk to me. I said, yo, yo beard is too raggedy. But they travel with the team. Shout out to the real fans that travel with the team. They don't know what they got themselves into. I said, I do this for a living. All I do is talk. I talk my voice off here, and then I'm going to go and jump on a live stream. Uh, TJ, he said, uh, hey, man, don't don't talk about me tonight. <laughs> Shout out to y'all, man. Shout out to all of y'all. All right, y'all. Y'all ready to get started with the show? Let's get it popping. So, um, I think that women have been scamming. I do. I think that women have been scamming for a long time. What up, LS? What up, uh, Messi? What up, Car Concierge? What up, Osriel? What's up to all of my ladies, Mary Lazo, everybody that's in the, in the building? I appreciate y'all. I think that women... Um, women have been scamming for a long time. And obviously, I'm not saying all, but I'm saying a, a large majority... Because you never can say everybody because there's always going to be outliers and anomalies and, you know, people that don't fit into the narrative. And there's some good girls and there's some people that's just been done wrong on both sides. There's guys that's been done wrong by the women that they're with. There's girls that's been done wrong by the women that they, uh, by the men that they're with. And so obviously you can't say, oh, I hate when I drop a video and I speak to a, a certain demographic and then people say, well, what about this? Well, what about that? Listen, obviously that don't apply if you got a special circumstance. Only you know about that. So if the shoe don't fit, then, then take it off and throw it at somebody else. But the point of the matter is when we have this conversation, we speaking to a demographic. Now, how have women been scamming? Because on the surface, you can say, well, women been scamming with all of the makeup and they've been scamming with the BBLs and all of that stuff. That's not what I'm talking about. That's not what I'm talking about, right? Because that's the surface level stuff. And I want to go a little bit deeper tonight than the surface level stuff. I really do. I want to go a little bit deeper than the surface level stuff. And the reason that they want to stop me from talking and having these conversations with y'all is because I'm empowering people. I'm not just empowering men, I'm empowering people. I'm helping people get to the truth, get to the core, get to the results. And contrary to popular belief, trauma is profitable. And I'm not even talking about profitable from a content creation perspective. I'm going to get into the live stream in a minute. I'm not even talking about profitable from a content creation perspective. I'm saying that trauma is profitable in the United States of America. Look, Society wants nothing more for you to then have your household broken up, for you to be a single baby mama, for you to be a step baby daddy, for you to be a step crash dummy, for you to get a divorce, for you to then get married again and get a divorce and have another another child out of wedlock or, you know, for you to bust it down and get a disease. Listen, every single industry benefits off of your personal dysfunction and you don't even really pay attention to that aspect of it because the only thing that you're thinking about is what you want to do, what you feel, and how it's going to make you feel at that particular time that you do it. Every industry benefits off of your drama. As a matter of fact, I would say that I benefit the least because I would be more profitable if I, if I pandered to you instead of telling you the truth because pandering actually generates way more revenue then the truth, when you tell the truth, you got to find a core audience. You got to find a certain demographic of people that want to agree with you. We can all keep a PC and I can make y'all laugh and I can tell jokes and kiki and ha ha and talk about things at surface level. But when we start getting deep, you know, the fact that I profess myself and I, and I acknowledge spirituality and I talk about God and Jesus and being saved and sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost and then I pray and then I pray for people in the morning show. Man, that junk ain't popular. That ain't cool. It's not cool for me to sit. Listen, the most annoying thing, and I'm not even talking about online, in real life, the biggest headache is to have to go to somebody, especially as a leader, and say, hey, man, you messing up. Even if you're in corporate America, even if you're in corporate America, the biggest headache, we love it when people do well. We can't wait for us to celebrate you because when everybody winning and everybody getting money, then everybody can continue to profit and we all feel good about each other. But when somebody is slacking or somebody is really messing up or even worse, when they're one step away from losing a job, that ain't fun. It ain't fun sitting here going back and forth with people trying to argue with them on what's in their best interest. 
You think that that's fun? That's draining. It takes every single thing out of you. And, and, and society, they benefit off of you being stupid. Okay, let me break it down for you. Let me give you an example, okay? Let's say, for example, you were two-time baby mama, three-time baby mama. Rita just told me that it was a guy online said, a women, women that are three-time baby mama shouldn't be able to vote because they know that you're going to vote for the wrong guy. Women that got three baby daddies, let me correct myself. The guy said, women that got three baby daddies shouldn't be able to vote because we know that you're going to pick the wrong guy. That's what, he, that's what the guy said. I, I thought about that, man. I said, hey, that, that might be it. That, that, he, got, he got quite a point right there. Women that got three different baby daddies shouldn't be able to vote because we know that you're going to pick the wrong guy. That's what he said. I said, I ain't never heard that one before, but that kind of resonates. But let's just say, for example, you have multiple children out of wet life. Well, we know that not only are you guys already taxed and you're never going to be able to get out of poverty. So first and foremost, you're automatically tied to a certain party because they're going to tell you that it's the system that got you down and it's not your own personal decisions. Right. So the first thing and the first people that's going to profit off of you is the family court system. Because you're going to leverage your kids against the man that you actually want, but then you know that he's not going to change and you shouldn't have never had children with him in the first place in order to continue to secure a bag for him. And so the family court system is going to benefit because it's a multi-billion dollar industry. And then we know that you're going to be out here committing crimes because it's a much likelier chance, it's a much higher chance for your children to become a part of the penal system, which is the prison industrial system. Right. We know that they're going to be making license plates. It's a possibility for that. Uh, counselors are booming right now as far as therapists and stuff. There has never been a more profitable time to be a therapist than right now. You know why? Because everybody is promoting therapy because everybody knows that they all messed up. And so therapy don't necessarily point you in the right direction and they don't get you the tools because the person that's giving you therapy don't even know what they're talking about. The name married either. So the therapist then doubles as a marriage counselor, which is the same thing that the church doubles as because we know that women are going to continue to go to the church and they're going to pray to God for a good man and they're going to give their 10% and they're going to make sure that they take care of the pastor. And then in addition to that, the church is going to continue to be profitable and they're going to get their cut from you because they know that all they got to do is sell you hope because they know that you are fiend for it and you're addicted to it and it's not that you're going to do the thing that's in your best interest. So the pastor is then going to pander to you, right? And then we know that the hospital system and all of these different entities, including everything tied to STDs and STIs, clinics, doctors, anesthesiologists, they're all going to profit off of you because what? We know that the majority of the people that's walking around here have some form of a disease or at least in their lifetime is going to catch a disease. And so it's not necessarily profitable for you to get married other than to continue to pour into the social system as a result of being overly taxed for doing the right thing because they're going to say, eat the rich because you made a decision to do the thing that's in the best interest of your family. And then ultimately, the people that are successful and great, they got to fight to keep what's in their pocket at a higher tax rate just because we don't want all of our money to go into social services from people that created self-inflicted wounds and decided to become a part of the system that then continues to churn out the worst things for us. And we know the police officers are going to continue to be profitable because we got to continue to raise rates because they got to continue to police you and catch you when you go over here and do crimes. And the insurance companies are going to continue to boom because they know that they can continue to raise rates in the areas where the crime is committed the most because you raise some of the most worst people for society because you didn't want to stay with your baby daddy or more importantly, you didn't pick the man that you were supposed to be with and then make sure that you married before you carry. And we know that all of the wedding planners is going to boom because they keep on selling these men on the idea that you're supposed to spend all of your money in order to make sure that you marry her and then go into debt. And so all of the credit card companies and all of the loan companies are going to continue to profit because they know that you're going to continue to make bad decisions and have to pay interest on the credit cards that you continue to use in order to substantiate your lifestyle, including the ones that you use in order to try to prove to her that you a high value man. And so you're going to be sitting here spending money that you ain't got. Right. Financing your lifestyle. And then when y'all decide to get married, y'all going to make sure that y'all get the house that you can best afford based off of the payment instead of making sure that you pay stuff off, which then creates another cycle for your children to then 
fall into the same trap that you fell into, not only from that perspective, but then you're going to pretend like you actually want them to do better, and so you're going to send them to college, and then they're going to go into these indoctrination camps, and they're going to slut it out, they're going to get pregnant, and they're going to have student loans on top of that, and so they're going to be paying interest, and then they then become tied to a liberal party that then don't do anything for them except for promise them forgiveness. Even if some of them don't get forgiven, they're going to promise them forgiveness so that they'll forever be tied or feel like they have some kind of tie to the Democratic Party because they owe you something. And so all of these different industries continue to make money from you and your dysfunction because you don't want to do the right thing. And it all comes back down to individual decisions. Lawyers are going to benefit because they know that you're going to pay a whole bunch of money for family court and divorce lawyers and all of this stuff. And so that's another booming industry. Do you know how much the United States of America would suffer if the majority of people actually made the right decisions? Because then people would have to rethink what society looks like because chaos and dysfunction actually is a profitable business model. It's similar to when we, come, when we talk about medicines and stuff like that. Why would they want to solve for it if they're making trillions of dollars, billions and trillions of dollars, and selling you the medicines instead of solving for and making sure that they cure you, then they will be shooting them all, their own selves in the foot. Why would they do that? It reminds me of the auto industry. Here in Detroit, we made sure that the laws, in order to make sure that you drive over certain roads, the roads continued to be towed up. It didn't have anything to do with the fact that we wasn't putting money into the roads. It had everything to do with the lobbyists from the auto manufacturers did not want to change how it is that we do roads, and they didn't want to, they didn't want to add in public transportation because what it would do is it would limit the amount of car sales, and so they wanted to incentivize people to keep it booming, so they continued to pour money into legislators and lobbyists' pockets in order to not do the thing that's in the best interest of the people. Carbon footprint will be lower. Lifestyle will be easier. Less money going to insurance companies. Michigan and Florida got the highest insurance rates of any states in the United States of America. Why? Because we refuse to do the thing that's in our best interest. And so it costs. It's profitable and it's costing because the money got to go somewhere. It's incredibly profitable for you to continue to have dysfunction in your life. And I'm trying to cure you and you're fighting against the cure. You don't want to be cured. You don't want to be helped. You don't want to be fixed. You don't want to stop scamming because you've already gave yourself a lifestyle. Do you know how hard it is to go from making a million dollars a year down to $100,000 a year once you start seeing a million dollars a year on a regular basis unless you're forced to go back to making $100,000 a year? You know how difficult that would be? Because huh? you can't unsee what you saw. And so we're going to go back to the original conversation of women scamming, right? Because women scamming is them continuing to be selfish enough to push men into a situation that they don't know or they don't actually, actually agree with is best for the man, but they voluntarily cover their eyes because they know that the men is going to fall for the trap every single time, since the beginning of time. A fat ass, fake femininity, chameleons, and then you trapped for the rest of your life. Trapped for the rest of your life. You know what? I was talking to my young boy today, and it was supposed to be a coaching call, but we had to postpone that shit. Real talk. We had to postpone that. And I said, young boy. And I already knew he was in trouble the minute that he called me. Because the whole time that we had been having conversations, and he know who he is, the whole time that we have been having conversations, and I remember this guy is 20, 21, 22 years old, 20, 21, 22 years old, about to graduate college with an engineering degree. You know what young bull told me today? He said, that time, man, you're going to be so disappointed in me. He said, man, yeah, you beat me. He said, man, yeah, you beat me. I said, bro, I was, I was so fearful of the conversation because I already knew where it was going. He said, man, you beat me. He said, you was right. You better than me. You a better man than me. I said, what you talking about, young bull? He said, you a better man than me. I said, what you talking about? He said, man, when you was my age, when you was 20, 21, 22 years old, you was making $100,000 plus dollars a year. I said, bro, it don't matter if you broke and you a college student. You supposed to be broke. So I'm trying to you know, make sure and trying to hope and pray in my mind. And in the back of my mind, I'm thinking to myself, 
man, don't say what you think I'm going to say. Because I already know what the background is. And see, the thing about me and the, and, the, and, the, and the interesting thing about me is that I know my people. So when people call me for a coaching call or they call, call to start getting into a conversation, I know your background because the first time or the first couple times that I talk to you, I ask so many questions and it's an opportunity for me to understand you so that I can know how to pour into you. So I already knew the background. I already had knew that I told him to leave that hoe alone. Mm. I knew that I told him to leave. I had been telling him for weeks and months. And I said, listen, fam, when he first met her, and he was like, yeah, man, uh, you know, this girl in school, whatever, and so on and so forth. And he described her. And I said, man, you better leave that woman alone. Focus on yourself. You better leave her alone. It's going to ruin your life. And ain't no way that you're going to be able to take it back. I said, you better leave that girl alone, bro. Familiarity, it's going to breed It's gonna breed a situation that you can't get yourself out of. Don't do it. Don't do it. Walk away. Cut it off now before you start liking her, before you start getting cool with her. Cut her the fuck off. Cut her off. I told him. I told him. And this was months ago. Oh, man, yeah, man, no, Anton, it's cool. We just going to be friends. We just going to be cool. We just going to be friends, bro. Man, it ain't, even nothing, ain't, it ain't even that big of a deal. Month later. What's going on, fam? What's going on? Yeah, man, I mean, he started asking me questions. And see, I can parse through and I can figure out what the hell is going on. He started asking, you know, how did you know that Rita was the one? This is what he asking me. How did you know your girl was the one? I was looking at the phone. I said, man, what you talking about, bro? That ain't even supposed to be your focus right now. You're supposed to be working your job and dedicating every moment that you have into your craft and graduating college and making sure you get the bag and take care of business and staying home and not, not creating any self-inflicted wounds and don't get influenced by what they got going on and stay away. I said, man, you still messing with that hoe? Yeah, man. I mean, we just cool, though, but I mean... I'm like her. I like her. You know, she a little ratchet. <laughs> if I'm lying, I'm flying. She a little ghetto. Her background is this, whatever. She a little this, she a little that. I said, man, listen, bro. I told you once, I'm going to tell you again. And I went off on him. I went off on him. And I said, bro, I'm not going to sit here and be nice to you. You a dummy. You an idiot. You about to ruin your life, and I could see it happening right before you. You are a fool. Man, why you going on phone like Like I said, man, because I'm going to be the father that you never had, and I'm going to tell you the truth, and I'm going to try to save your life right now. And, and the one thing that you're not going to be able to say at the end of this conversation is that I did not tell you the absolute God's honest truth, regardless of how you feel about me. I'm not here to make you feel good. I'm not here to be your friend. I'm here to tell you the truth. And I say, man, you a fool. You sitting here talking about how you know you don't want. I said, man, you know that girl ain't, ain't for you. You know that that ain't your play. I said, Joe, you know what I'm saying? You, you, you made all of the right decisions. You minimize the amount of money that you ever had to borrow. You ain't got no student loan debt or nothing of this. Man, focus. Get yourself together. I, man, I went off. I called him every name in the book. All right, OG. All right, Unc. All right, Unc. Next month, I'm fucking on her. Ah, man, I just slipped up one time. I, I just slipped up one time, OG. I mean, we was just saying there. And the... Next month, I said, man, you leave that girl alone. I said, bro, don't call me, man. Don't, don't schedule another call. Don't call me. I don't want to talk to you because I'm not. I can't witness this. I can't watch this crash. It's happening right before my eyes, and I can't shake you up. I can't grab you and put my hands on you. I can't slap you in your face and tell you, man, wake the fuck up. Stop getting yourself in this situation. You're going to crash out. Leave her alone. Leave her alone. She not for you. Man, she keep calling me, telling me that she loved me and all of this other type of stuff. And I, eh. Got on the phone today. Yeah, man, you better than me, bro. I already knew what was up. You better than me, man. You know, you was getting, I said, man, what you done did, bro? She pregnant. 
That's why I can't. That's why I moved that call, Rita. He said he, he said she's pregnant. I said, how far is she? Almost two months. Almost two months pregnant. And you ain't even graduated college. Now he remixing his whole plans. Yeah, man, uh, I ain't going to be able to stay home no more because I ain't even told my parents yet. I got to go ahead and get an apartment now. I got to get a bigger place because we trying to figure out if she going to even work anymore and all this other type of shit. I said, you ain't told your parents. It's going to be a hard conversation. I'm on my way over there right now. I said, get the fuck off my phone, bro. Get off my phone. Get off my phone. Depart from me. I never knew thee. Depart from me. I never knew you. Because if you're going to sit here and crash out, then don't say that I gave you any advice whatsoever. If you're going to be a bad representation of what it is that you're supposed to be, do not ever say it. How? How? After all of the information that we continue to have, after I literally give you the blueprint, after I talk to you day in and day out, and I tell you what you're supposed to do, and I tell you what my mistakes are, and I show you what my successes is, and I show you my bank accounts. I don't do this for me. I know how much money is in my bank account. I know what my spending summary is. I know how much money that I generate. I know what's in my brokerage account. I know how much I make on my regular job. I don't get nothing out of showing you my stuff. I don't get nothing off of, off of showing you my wife. I don't get nothing off of breaking down and bringing my mama on my platforms on the Millionaire Morning Show in order to illustrate the examples. I don't get nothing out of showing you my rental properties. I don't get nothing after telling you the stories about how I went broke. I went broke. I experienced it. I don't get nothing from that. I don't get nothing off of continuing to show you and showcase exactly what success is supposed to look like. You see my motherfucking background? I live it. I'm here in real life. I can overlook the city. And it's all across. My, every wall is fucking glass outside of the ones that's interior in order for me to be able to have my TV on and stuff like that. I live it in real life. I just come from the game. Every game that I go to, I'm row one. I'm joking with the players. I walk around with so many different fucking watches. I got, over, I got almost a half a million dollars worth of watches. In different places. I just came back from Tokyo last year. I'm probably going to hit Seoul, Italy, Rome, all of the different places, man. Ain't you inspired? You think I do this shit for me? I'm already living it. I already experienced it. I'm already in the, in the space. My life is set. I'm 41 years old. It don't get nothing but better from here for me. But you think I'm doing this for me? I'm doing this for you. Ladies. You think that I show you what my life is like and the fact that I've been married for almost 20 years coming up on June because it makes me feel good? I do this for you. I'm trying to show you and give you the blueprint of what success is supposed to be like. Listen, I know your man don't want to watch the live stream with me because it's going to be tough for that nigga. It's tough to watch me. And it ain't because... I'm any bad person or anything like that. It's tough to watch me because then you got to hold yourself accountable. I remove every single accountability problem that you try to blame on society. It ain't the system. It ain't mother. It ain't daddy. It ain't nobody but you. It's you. You continue to have these self-inflicted wounds every single day and it break my fucking heart. It break my heart, man, because I pour into y'all so much and I want nothing more than to leave this earth in a better space had I not been here. Listen, man, listen, you get to a point in your life, in your 20s, you trying to figure it out because you want to get rich. In your 30s, you start to put it together and you can start, you can, you can start to experience life. In your 40s, you won. Whatever it was that you did in your 20s and your 30s, it's going to manifest itself exponentially in your 40s. If you do the right thing and you invest your money and you make the right decisions, your life is going to be blissful. If you fuck up and you smoke all day and you drink and your liver is fucked up and, and, and you don't know what to do, it's going to exponentially be worse when you get older. The, the, you're going to pay for the things that you did, right or wrong. You're going to get whatever it is, seeds that you sow, good or bad. 
if you fuck up in your 20s and in your teens and you out here robbing stores and you and you over here slapping hoes and you pulling your penis out on the playground and some shit and you end up on a sex offenders list, that shit don't go away. Kids don't go away. When you get somebody pregnant, it don't go away. This ain't no game. Y'all keep having kids out here out of wet like like we like this is a video fucking game. What you mean you pregnant again? What you mean you just open up your legs? What you mean you continue to have kids with a nigga you ain't married to? What you talking about? This ain't no simulation. This is real life. This ain't the Matrix. What do you think that this is? This is a movie? Huh? How did you think that this was going to play out? What you think you're going to get some harder work ethic all of a sudden? Now that you got a kid on the way, nigga, you're going to be the same person that you are and it's going to be 10 times harder. 10 times harder what you think that I'm telling you to have dick discipline because it make me feel good. Nigga, I don't get nothing out of you having dick discipline except for the satisfaction of knowing that you're not fucking fumbling. You think my voice just be going hoarse and I'm out and I talk to y'all day in and day out, day in and day out. I know, what. The, listen, I move based off of data. My job is to study and understand what people want. I know what streams that I can do to generate the most views possible. And this ain't it. This is not it, family. This ain't fucking it. I can make so much more money and be so much more, so much richer. So much richer than the shit that I'm doing right now. This ain't it. You ain't it. And for the woman, you let her finesse you. You let her finesse you into getting the kid, bro. How you do that? How we doing this? Don't y'all know that a lot of these women been scamming since the beginning of time, bro? That they already know that the only thing that they have to stop you from being the person that you're supposed to be in order to continue to suck you dry is box? That's it. That's it. You know, we've come to a point in society where they call me a cornball or lame because I didn't have a ch child out of wedlock because I ain't never been arrested. You know, I don't know how many times I read inside of my comments where these stupid bitch ass niggas. I'm going to just say it, call it what it is. I seen somebody in my chat the other day. They said, Anton, I will listen to you more if you stop cussing. Listen, I'm not stopping saying nothing. I'm going to say what the sentiment is of my heart. And if you can't read between the lines and be able to parse through the data in order to get the meat and spit out the bones, that's on you. They said, ah, you could tell Anton wasn't that guy because he didn't get hoes. Or... Nigga, what the fuck are you talking about? Are you, are you serious that I'm supposed to sit here and try to go back in my past in order to prove to you that I was for the streets? You dumb motherfucker. What is wrong with this society? I thought that the goal was to get out of the hood. I thought that the goal was to be old and fat and be sitting on the barbecue pit talking about the stories and having fun and watching your grandkids run around and shit like that. Ain't that the goal? Ain't the goal to get old and to have a big old TV and have some kind of fucking recliner and to know that you did the right thing and made the right moves and you got a solid family unit or everything is going well. So you want me to fucking crash out in order to be able to validate to you that I'm a real nigga. I got to go do some time in jail. Don't you know that real ones don't go back and talk about the women that they didn't bust down and they don't name names, nigga? I ain't never seen a successful drug dealer. Why would a nigga that used to move work and I ain't never moved work in my life? Let's be very, very clear, but I'm using a hypothetical example in order to illustrate a point. Why would a nigga that ever moved work go online and start telling a nigga that he used to move work when the goal was to get out of the game in the first place? Why would I want to influence a nigga to ever go and move work? That ain't smart. Oh, yeah, I dodged it. Ain't you, you ain't get hoes, no. Let me remix it for you. I never got a disease. I never had a kid out of wetlock, nigga. I never fucked up my life. I never went to child support court, ever. I was always intentional with taking care of what it is that I knew what I was supposed to do, and I was never going to have a fucking self-inflicted wound. 
I ain't never been on a sex offenders list. I ain't never been to prison. You goddamn right. If that's what you call in a nerd and if that's what you call in a lane, I take that 10 times out of 10. Over what you dealing with? Nigga, you broke, dusty, and child support court, ain't got no motherfucking money, no job prospects, inflation is kicking your ass, and you about to be living van life. I'd rather be me than be you. I'd rather be me than be you. Nigga, we sit in courtside every single game that we choose to go to. I give away tickets. I employ people. I'm not begging a nigga for a job. Man, we had somebody that emailed me the other day. Man, this nigga tried to go off on me. I told Rita, I said, listen, don't try to sell this nigga on the idea of getting a coaching call. He going to hit me up tell it, asking me, uh, what can you do for me? What can I do for you? I, I was trying to convince Rita, don't even reply to the email. Is this Anton that I'm talking to? I was looking at the email. I said, what in the fuck? Who, who is these niggas? Who raised you? If it wasn't for the fact that I'm 100% I'm above board and making sure that I never, ever, ever tell and name names and all of that shit, I will read it to you. I was so appalled. Anybody got any gray poupon? I was so appalled. What can I do for you? And then he going to try to convince Rita to sell him on an idea. I said, girl, if you don't delete that email and keep it moving, I don't want to do business with that nigga. And y'all still getting finessed every single day. Every single day, bro. You get finessed in every aspect of your life. Your whole life. Bro, don't you realize that your mama finessed you? Yo, mama raised you to be a be a son husband, bro. You nothing more than a support animal to your mother. You're a support animal to your mother. Don't you know that the way that she lay next to you or the way that she laid next to you when she was raising you was a substitute for how it is that she felt like or what she really wanted to be cuddled under to the man that she was supposed to be with? And she treated you that same way and she used you. Women are using their children as support dogs and support animals to make themselves feel better. And then raising them to take care of them when they get older because that's their companion. They use you. They abuse you. That is abuse. That's fraud. That's fraud. Because you have bad intentions for a person and you are siphoning their life energy from them in order to make you feel better we don't exist for our children to take care of us we exist to give our children what they need in order to be better versions of us we not supposed to be a burden upon our children we supposed to be a blessing that's a burden that's fraud that's a finesse that's a scam you scammed your own kid I seen a chick on a video that I did today, I think it was today or it was yesterday, a woman from Atlanta convinced her kid or told her kid to steal a purse and then they all walked out on a bill that was over $500. Don't y'all know that these women is finessing y'all whenever it is that they telling y'all to go and do something that's not even in your best interest? Dog, you wasn't even, you wasn't even interested in going to Ocean Prime. You don't even know what Ocean Prime is. You don't even like steak. You don't even have a taste for it. You don't know what the difference is between scotch, tequila. I had Rita going to sit here and try to stunt on me about tequila the other day. I said, I don't care nothing about what you're talking about. Tastes good. You don't even have your own taste buds. You don't know nothing about this life, but you convincing, you letting a woman convince you to crash out. You spending your whole paycheck to impress people that have you listen in their phone as, as an item, as food. I wouldn't even be surprised if these women started labeling y'all the restaurant that they want to go to. They are using, they have been using you since the beginning of time, since time existed. They finessing y'all out of child support. You know, every single woman, Q said it the other day, every single woman on the internet 
they get pregnant, regardless of the circumstances by which they get pregnant, it's a congratulations. I love that for you. That's the new saying. I love that for you. Congratulations. Congratulations on what? Congratulations on getting pregnant and fucking up somebody else's life. And y'all keep falling for it. Listen, we know that they're going to give y'all herpes and all of this other stuff. All right? We know this. This goes without saying. We already know that this is going to happen. But see, the one thing that we not, I, I can't believe that y'all giving up all of this money in child support. I can't believe that y'all continue to have children out of wedlock. I can't believe that y'all continue to convince them to go 100-0 with y'all. Dog, who do you think that you're proving something to by going out there and paying all of the bills? Who do you think you're proving it something? Who are you doing it for? I'm so tired of reading y'all in the comments talking about, well, I'm glad my second daddy, that's her stepfather, I'm glad my second daddy didn't abandon me and my mama. Didn't abandon y'all. What do you mean? Your real daddy is the one that abandoned you. He had no obligation to you. And I'm just going to start typing. His fault. Because everybody that goes into the chat and every woman or every man that goes into the chat and say, yeah, man, um, I'm, you know, I'm a stepfather or I'm glad that my stepfather didn't abandon me. Here's my question. What did you do for him? I love him unconditionally. Shut the fuck up and get out of my face. Keep your love. You know what my father taught me when I was growing up? He said, yo, Anton, I'd rather have your love. I mean, I'd rather have your respect than your love. He said, make them respect you. If they don't respect you, tell them to keep their love. Make them respect. I'd rather have your respect than your love. Because the thing that people define love as today is here today and is going tomorrow. Is here today and is going tomorrow. Man, I don't need no friends other than the chasers. I don't need no friends other than the people that's in this chat. I don't need no friends other than the people that's holding me down right here and there because I know that the people that hold me down, I see them day in and day out. Day in and day out. The big question is, how did I avoid? How did I avoid all the way up until four? See, this is the thing nobody ever asked me. Coaching calls, live streams, call-ins on, on after hours. No, and I'll be so surprised. And I'll just be waiting. For so many years, I've been waiting. For somebody asked me the million-dollar question. And the million-dollar question has nothing to do with my career choice. I get that question all the time. Should you go into cybersecurity? Are you too old in order to continue to revamp your life and reinvent what it is that you got going on? Absolutely not. How is it that you can fix your relationship? I got it. That's not the million-dollar question. The million-dollar question is, Anton, how did you dodge the entire world that was against you? Whether it was content creation, women for the streets, how have you been able to maintain then absolutely, positively be 100% outside of anything that is bad for you. You ain't never got a chick pregnant. You ain't never had a scandal. You ain't never had a problem. You ain't never had a disease. You ain't never had no complaints. You ain't never had a divorce filed against you. You ain't never had no issues, problems, trauma, none of that. How is it that you've been able to ac accomplish this and grow to be 40-something years old and nobody, nobody, not one person on the face of this earth can ever throw dirt on your name. Not a woman, not a guy, not a kid, not nothing. Nobody could ever throw dirt on your name. That is the million dollar question. How, yep, Elmatic, you got it. How did you avoid the pitfalls? It's a simple answer. It's a very, very simple answer. It don't even have nothing to do with my mindset towards God. It don't have anything to do with my mindset towards Rita. Don't have anything to do with my mindset towards my daughter. Don't have anything to do with anything other than one simple decision. And the decision can be different for everybody. But I think that my life is a reflection of it. And you know what that is? I want it to be rich. 
it's that simple. I wanted to be rich and anything, anything that would get in my way from doing it. Think about it. It seems like a very simple answer because everybody want to be rich. But do they? Because I always believe that communication is based off of what you do. It's in your body language. The things that you say, the things that you say is just the cherry on top. I wanted to be rich. Uncontrollably, unbelievably rich. That is the thing that kept me from every single pitfall in my life. Well, okay, let me show you the implementation of it. I see girl over there, and this is when I was younger, and I was thinking to myself, damn, man, because I, I listen, real talk, Lamborghinis on my wall as far as the posters, you know what I'm saying? I had a number in my head of what it is that I wanted to hit and all of this stuff and where I wanted to live and how I wanted to travel, and I manifested that shit. And I didn't manifest it by hoping and wishing. I manifested it by making sure that I didn't have no self-inflicted wounds that I wouldn't be able to recover from. I see that girl, and I don't give a fuck how bad she is. I have no regard for how bad that she is. At all. You know why? Because as fine as that bitch is, I ain't about to get her pregnant. Hell no. I see these niggas out here paying child support. You can fucking forget it. Mm -mm. That's going to take away from what it is that I'm going to contribute into my investments as far as compound interest. I can't give her no money. Fuck that. I can't give her a dime. I can't give it to her. No. Divorce? Shit. Give up half of my shit? Who you talking to? Girl, we don't have to work this shit out. Under no circumstances, under zero circumstances, am I ever going to be in a position to where I fucking fumble a bag? Not even a little bit. Divorce? <laughs> Whatever it is that you think that we was... Man, look, y'all want to be real with y'all? I'm going to be absolutely real with y'all. Look, I have no problem being 100% real with y'all. I don't even care about going to games like that that often. I only go every once in a while. You know why I went to the game tonight? To entertain her? 100%. 100%. Rita texted me today. Actually, it wasn't even a text message. Uh, she texted me, and then she called me. Or did I call you? I don't remember. Who called who? I called you. She texted me. I called her. I said, what's going on? Uh, you know how women are. They don't really want to tell you the truth. And so you got to kind of wiggle it out of them or talk about other stuff and get it up out of them. And she was feeling some type of way. God is my witness. I'm going to be absolutely honest with y'all. Nope, she didn't want to go. She never mentioned that she wanted to go at all. She was feeling some type of way. And I was like, uh, oh, yeah? So we had our little, little tiff. Yeah, we had our little tiff. I was sitting there. I had my AirPods on. And I was walking into the studio or whatever. And I had caught the Q line or whatever or whatever, so on and so forth. So we had our little, little disagreement. It ain't never an argument. Let's be clear. It's just a little tiff. You know what I'm saying? She, she, she states her concern. And then I say, oh, okay. Hmm. Interesting. And so I listen and we get off the phone and then I go and do what it is that I do. And then I call her back a little bit later and I say, hey, listen, come on, come on through. I'm going to need you to meet me at the studio. Be down here by six o'clock. Be down here by six o'clock and I'm going to address this shit. And when I say I'm going to address it, I don't address it with anger, issues, problems, or extended conversation. My life goal and the thing that I said as far as the, the foundation of what it is that we do in our relationship, 98, 99% of the time, we're going to spend time on the things that we actually care about. And the other 1% will fix. She get down. I see her. 
She's sitting in the chair, ain't even really saying nothing yet. I said, oh, okay. Cut the computer off, go and get into the elevator, go down, go and pick up the car. As soon as we get in the elevator, pin her up against the wall, start breathing on her neck. I could see her smiling. She just wants some quality time. Oh, okay, I got you. I got you. I'll fix that shit. I'm about to take her to the game and embarrass her because she like she likes seeing me going stupid and going crazy. That's it. It's the whole reason that I went to the game. Because let me tell you something. I need her in a good mental mind state so she can be taking care of business and doing what she's supposed to do tomorrow. I need her in a great space mentally so that she can take care of business and she can be on top of things tomorrow. One day, one afternoon, a breathing down her neck a little bit, walk her to the car, open up the door for her, psh, slap her on the butt as she get in. Oh, my God. She feeling good. She chilling. Feeling good, in a good mood. Sitting right there on the couch. Sitting right there on the couch. Just having a good old time. Ain't thinking about nothing. In bliss, slow motion. Just chilling. I'm a fixer. You know why? Because <laughs> I want to get richer. Because <laughs> I want to get richer. I'm not about to sit here and go back and forth with no motherfucker. I'm not about to be arguing. I ain't about to have no problems, no issues, no trouble. My whole life, the common denominator, and I think that all men need to learn this lesson. All men need to learn this lesson. You need to find one thing that's incredible. One thing that you need to be on top of. One thing that you need to be focused on. And you need to zero in on that shit and don't let nobody, nothing, and no one get in the way of what it is that you got going on right there. Not a woman, not a child, not a, not a friend, not nothing. Anything. It always comes back down to that thing because I'm not telling you that other things don't matter. I'm not telling you that God don't matter. I'm not telling you that your parents don't matter. But it should never matter enough to derail you from that one thing. Listen, I'm not telling you to make a whole fucking vision board because the vision board is going to distract you from what it is that you have going on. And it's not going to be able to keep you centered on the things that's meaningful in life. Doesn't mean that you can't have spirituality. Doesn't mean that you can't have awesomeness. But I'm telling you, it has to be one thing, one thing that you focused on. And that is the thing that is always going to draw you away from or keep you centered into and not have you fumble in the bag in no way, shape, or form. Because every decision that I made as I was growing up, it always came back down to, is this shit going to def defer me from a day, a week, a year from me continuing to get rich? And when I seen that chick and she was like, uh-uh, I don't want to use no rubber. And I was like, ooh. 18 years, 18 years, and at the end of that, he found out it wasn't his. Mm -mm. Hop on, who this woman? Listen, man, I will tell the woman to get the fuck up out of my face in five seconds. I have no problem whatsoever. I mean, hey, you got to go. Get, 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 get gone. Get gone. You got to get the fuck up out of here. Because in no way, shape, or form am I ever going to allow you to derail me from this one fucking thing. And when everybody else, they, they went out and they was going to the show and they was having a good time. And I was in the basement and I was working on my craft. And I was mastering what it was that I was doing. And I was putting in my 10,000 hours on content creation and software engineering. And I was building my applications. And I was focused on putting together my resume and crafting my online profile and persona so that I can market myself in corporate America. I didn't give a fuck about what everybody else was doing. Because I was never going to let them derail me from what it was that I had made up in my mind that I was going to do. And that was to get rich. Get rich as fuck. And y'all need to figure out what that one thing is. It's one thing 
that you want more than any other thing in your life. I don't care what it is. I don't care if it's a specific high-end car and you want to pay for it cash. I don't care if it's a specific career that you want to zero in on and you know that it's nothing that should be able to derail you from studying or putting in the time because this is the way that you reverse engineer that you had to get there and anything that prevents you from being able to get there needs to be moved out of your way. Because they're not going nowhere. It's never going to be a shortage of women. There's never going to be a shortage of people. There's never going to be a shortage of friends. There's never going to be a shortage of hanger-ons. There's never going to be a shortage of anything that you think is going to be indirect or, or sparse or scarcity of. It's not going to be that. You know what you have? You have a finite amount of time and a window of opportunity to really execute on something, and you need to win. You need to hit it with everything that you got. Hit it with every single thing that you got, and don't let nothing and nobody tell you or shame you away from it. They're going to tell you, oh, it's, it's going to be a chick. And she's going to say, what, you don't want to hit this? I got to study. And they're going to be looking at you funny. Ooh, you must be gay. Nah, I must be rich as fuck five years from now because I ain't wasting my time crashing out because I know I got a test in the morning and I can't derail myself from fucking on you. Everything comes back to that one thing. You ain't got to be smart. You ain't got to be wise. You ain't got to be the, sm the sharpest knife in the room. It ain't got nothing to do with that. It got everything to do with preventing yourself from having self-inflicted wounds. When I would go to school, and the reason that I decided to go to community college first is because I was looking at everybody and I was saying, damn, how many, what, what kind of student loans you got? And then I went in and I went and talked to the counselor and I talked to the counselor at the community college and then I talked to the counselor at the major university and I had a guy accepted into both. And I was like, hmm, how much per credit hour over there? How much per credit hour over there? And you telling me that as long as all of these classes that I'm doing, including this one, this one, and this one, all transfers over there. And the only thing I'm missing is some college parties. Nigga, we gonna be hanging out at Michigan State and University of Michigan on the weekends anyway. What the fuck I care? Dog, we about to get this community college in popping, and I will see you on the weekend at Michigan State. And then we were still up in Michigan State busting down them holes in their dorms. We gonna be up at campus anyway. I'm not about to pay these niggas an extra three, four hundred dollars a credit hour just to say that I went there, I will see you later. What the fuck I care? Every single decision that I made in my life was like, that don't make sense. That's going to derail me from getting rich. Damn. You mean that I'm going to have to spend the next 10 years? How long is y'all student loans? 10 years? 10 years? Shit. You can forget it. Sign me out, coach. Not going to happen. Can't happen. Can't happen. Can't happen. I'm not going to do it. No, no, I'm not going to do it. Mm -mm, I'm not going to do it. Listen, I was so focused on getting rich that me and Rita almost made the decision not to have a child. Because I was like, man... This might be a little bit more difficult for me to get rich if I got a child. <laughs> I lie to you not. I lie to you not. Man. When I ran into Rita, uh, when I ran back into her, she was a couple semesters in, and I think she had like $11,000 in student loans. I was like, uh, I'm taking over that. I'm taking over that. I need everything. Give me the credit cards and the bank books and, and, and leave all of that shit behind. I don't know what your friends is talking about. Listen, and I told her, I gave her an ultimatum. I said, look, either you rolling with me and you leaving this, them alone or you rolling with your homegirls who you think is your best friends and you picking them. Make a decision. Ain't no compromising. Ain't none of that shit. Mm -mm. Ain't no compromising, nothing. She was like, okay. I'm rolling with you. Wasn't even a question in her mind. First thing we did, dedicate every paycheck that she had going into them student time to pay off the student loans. You got 11000 Not a dime mo, Not a penny mo, Not one more dime is going into that. 
It's over. Everything had to be based off of going to get that bag. I wanted to be more rich than I wanted to have a random chick with some pussy. I wanted to be more rich than I wanted to have a baby mama. I wanted to be more, I wanted to be rich more than I wanted to go to the show. I wanted to be rich more than I wanted to smoke weed. Even when it came to moving work and stuff, and we started doing the math, and I was like, damn, y'all niggas risking your life for that money? That's not, that's not going to get you rich. I start looking at it, and I was like, I don't know no drug dealers that ever retired. We don't have no examples that ever retired. Then I started spending all my time. Uh, uh, when I went to college and I was uh, at UAD and I had my work-study job, I, spent, I had my work-study job inside of the library. I started reading every single thing that I could that I could get my hands on. Then all of them had the same story. It was a blueprint for what being rich looked like. It was literally a blueprint. I read every biography. Warren Buffett. I started started studying uh, Benjamin Graham. I read a random walk down Wall Street. I started looking at all of the great ones. I started listening and, and, and understanding Charlie Munger. And, and I just scoured every single financial book and autobiography. And I started reading the history of slavery. And I wanted to go back and understand what wealth looked like back in the day and how people wound up getting conquered and what an indentured servitude looked like and how did they build the ships and what did they do to conquer America and what war looked like and how it is that they studied this and that. And I just spent, I would go in and I would work extra hard and then I would just sit there for the next six hours and read until the library closed. And I know two things. I knew two things when I was in there. The first thing that I realized was, okay, listen, me sitting in this library prevents me from being in the, in the streets. Me sitting in this library is preventing me from being in the streets. That's number one. And number two, I knew I couldn't go wrong with more knowledge. Because at some point, even if I didn't understand it, I was going I was going to have an epiphany and I was going to be able to utilize that information somewhere in the future. And all of those lessons then manifested when it came to real estate, when it came to interest and compound interest, when it came to investing and which stocks that I was going to pick and how Warren Buffett used to study all of the papers from Ford Motor Company back in the 60s to understand how it is that they implemented things today and why he invested in Coca-Cola and now look at us. Now these same principles and the things that we look at is the same stuff that we teach in Stock Club on the Patreon today. Every single thing that I wind up implementing and being successful at is the thing that we then utilize to teach the people in Stock Club today. I was just a, a, a beacon for knowledge and I just was thirsty and the more that I read, the more that I understood and I started reading the Bible more and I started looking at the business strategies and the principles and you know how it is that they wind up moving and, and doing things and then I would implement that in my life and every success it would compound and it's time to win. And when I wind up going broke, I was like, you know what? Time to hit the reset button, going to move in with my parents, saving some money, letting them, have, you know what I'm saying? Letting my daughter continue to be raised in an environment where it's a cultural norm based off of how I was raised with my grandmother, you know, with her grandmother and my mother and stuff like that. And I buckled down and I went back to the drawing board and I, it was all based off of just trying to get rich. No woman, no person, no friend. None of them was above being let go, let go when it came to being rich. I would let go of my whole family. I divested myself against my whole family to get rich. Because if they wasn't going in the direction that we going in, then that means that we was outgrowing each other. Fuck it. And you got to find that North Star. You got to find that thing that you're going to have tunnel vision on, that you're not going to let nobody prevent you from getting there. And it's people that's next to you every single day. It's women, it's men, it's families, it's friends, it's people that is that is slowing you down from getting to where you want to be. Stop fucking up. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. Let me drop this link inside of it. Oh, the link is already inside of the chat. All right, so listen, if you got a question, or you got anything that you want to get up off of you, um, and you want to have a conversation, uh, feel free to call into the show. And we're going to get there. Let me read some of these super chats. Um, and then we're going to get to it. Wendell Kilgore is in the building. says, preach, Pastor Ant. Shout out to Wendell Kilgore. I appreciate you. 
Trini Life has said, "Life keep doing you. Life is too short, or life is short." Shout out to Toby. Toby says, "Anti, keep doing what you're doing. We don't care what the suckers got to say. We need people. We we need people like you. Salute, salute to you, big dog." Uh, McCole's wellness in motion. I love that girl. Says much respect and appreciation for what you're doing. The great content. May you continue, continue. To let Christ lead you. I love that girl. Black Goku Zero says, that's why other communities laugh, us, laugh at us and say, we don't have to compete with black men because black women have handicapped them enough. G Collection 90 says, called the police on my baby mama this weekend for hitting me and pulling out a knife in front of our child. Every person told me I did the right thing, but her, but her divorced sister and single mother shaking my head. Mm. Spencer Campbell, shout out to <laughs> Ben said, I appreciate Wednesday night services in the middle of my 12th work night. Man, 12-hour work night. God bless you, Anton. Shout out to you, Spence. I appreciate you, bro, for holding me down. Riverdale Kings DMV says, your talk is fire, Anton. Keep preaching. Miss Lady J is in the building, says, you and your wife are definitely a great example of couple goals. Uh, Ashtino Ellis says, what's good, Anton? Hope all is well. Shout out to you, big dog. Thank you to everybody that continues to support the platform. I'm going to continue to keep y'all up here, and I'm going to read that, read that throughout the show. Let me bring my dog up here. I got to get my dog up here. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I got to get my guy, and y'all know who my guy is. If you don't know who my guy is by now, then you really, really missing out. Let me say this. First and foremost, if you not subscribe to No Captivity with Freezy, and you are absolutely positively missing out. What up, Freezy? AD, what's going on with you, my brother? Chilling, chilling, my friend. How you feel? <laughs> man, I was, I was, I was under the weather, man, this weekend. You was in Tampa this weekend? Yeah, man. I had, but I was only there for. It wasn't even twenty four hours. I I flew in on um, Saturday afternoon. Or Saturday morning, and I flew out Saturday morning. So I was there for about 24 hours. AD, it's a lot of flashing lights, man, out here. And what I mean by flashing lights, I mean distractions, right? Mm. And uh, Oh, man, like, it is. We got social media. Uh, we got, uh, you know, music, entertainment. Uh, it's just a lot of stuff. And just to sit up here and hear you talk about how much focus you had, AD, that's a gift. You think that's so? A, yes, because Why are you think about, that? bro, think about how many distractions it is today. It's it's way it's far more than it was when we was when we was kids. Like it is, it is more distractions now. It's way more distractions, bro. Like you know, and. It takes a lot of wherewithal. A lot of people don't have that wherewithal to withstand the amount of distraction that we're faced with, man. Mm. Uh, like social media is a world within itself. Yeah, but I don't. You know, I don't check social media like that, though, Freezy. You don't. Like my um, my Instagram. Like I uh, I only check it maybe once a day, once a day, once or twice a day. Like, I don't check it and look at and scroll that stuff. I just check it to see, you know, make sure that ain't nobody send me no message that I need to be aware of. And other than that, and I'm off it. Like, I don't, I don't be, I don't check it. You're like not really that. heavy on social media like that. Mm -hmm. It seemed like I am because I'm on it. Like, I'm everywhere. I'm on it. Yeah. But I'm not, I'm not on it. Like, I'm not checking for it. That's focused, dog. You know what I'm saying? I don't even subject myself to it. You don't you don't you don't check how many you don't care how many likes you get you just post that shit keep it moving. Mm -hmm. I don't check my numbers when it come to YouTube. I don't check my numbers when it come to only t only time I check it is at the end of the month. As far as like my numbers or my likes and stuff like that, I post what I post and I'm gone. Ad, you know how many BBLs it is out there and, and, and shiny titties. <laughs> well, it's a it's a lot of. Think about how many shiny side boobs it is out there, dog. Yeah. You know? and, and let me tell you something. Once look, I really look, broke look it down. This. 
Look at this. With the- <laughs> <laughs> Chris said this nigga responded to my DM like two weeks later. Yo, I had so many famous people in my DMs. I checked it today. And it was like some of like four or five weeks ago. I, I hit them back. I said, oh, man, my bad. I ain't see this. And, they, and then they responded right back. And so we have a conversation. I don't, I don't check my shit like that. I never check my shit, bro. But think about you're saying you was focused on getting rich. Just coming from a rich man such as yourself. What, <laughs> what kind I'm of- more, I'm more focused now than I ever been, have been, bro. Like I'm yeah. more focused now. Like I don't, I want to be like way further ahead than I am. And so I don't miss, I don't have, I, I, I can't afford um, in my mind, to be distracted by shit that ain't add value in my life. So I don't miss ever, bro. Like, one of the reasons that I, that I moved downtown is because I felt like I could be more efficient. Mm. Yeah, I could, I could be way more efficient and more focused down here. That You don't think that's a skill to, to you know, to... You don't think that's... A, okay, not a skill, a gift. Maybe that's the right word. I don't, I never thought about it. I just, this is just the way that I program myself my entire life. It I'm just not distracted. Is. Yeah, you ain't never thought about it. I'm going to tell you something, AD, just from, you know, being around certain people mm-hmm. and where I needed to be, where I need to get myself in life, bro, that's a gift, man. Yeah. That's why, that's why where you at, it's a small percentage because most people cannot, they, 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 they cannot maintain that level of focus, dog. I'm telling you. It's they not hard, it. Freezy. It's not hard. Listen, I, I'll give you an example. I see my homegirl Q in the, in the chat. I see so many beautiful women in the Shout chat. Shout out to Q. Shout out to Q. Shout out I to do. Q. I see it. And Q is absolutely gorgeous. Like, Q is bad as fuck. But see, when I first linked up with Q, I remember the first time that we ran into each other. It was in Houston. And uh, I gave her a hug. We walked up and we, we gave each other a hug. But see, I don't see Q like everybody else sees, sees Q. When everybody else look at Q, they look at her like, oh, my God, she's so fucking bad. I want to fuck her and all of that shit, right? Like, let's just be real. I don't see Q like that. I seen Q and I was like, damn, I can utilize her. That's the first thing that came to my mind when I seen Q. I was like, damn, I could really, really use her. Like, shit, she's smart as fuck. Like, dog. Do you like I learned what she did for a living and you know what I'm saying? Like I was I didn't see that shit. And so now I see her as like a little sister. I see her like a little sister. And so it's a difference. When other niggas is looking at you like, damn, I can I I, I be looking at her like, damn, I can utilize all of this drooling that these niggas is doing in order to continue to get a bag. What, what AD, listen, most guys would He's smart as fuck, bro. People don't know that. She's smart as hell. Most most guys wouldn't give a fuck. They're gonna try to fuck. They're gonna tell they're gonna tell Q exactly what she want to hear. They're gonna, you know, they're gonna make her feel good about herself because they're trying to fuck. They're not trying to utilize Q for, you know, in whatever she's her her wherever she's resourceful at, most resourceful at. They're gonna try to fuck, dog. And then when most guys Well, yeah, that's guys, but that's to my advantage though. That's a fact. Yeah. When most guys log on to the internet, right? Most guys logging on to see uh, something sexual, something, you know, th- th- this is why the internet is at an all time high hypersexuality. You know, I blame it on the men because we validate that bullshit. And that lets me know most men ain't on business. And I don't even know why they got this goofy ass term talking about standing on business because most of you niggas ain't. Well, but then the other side of it, though, Freezy, is that, listen, Q is, Q is gorgeous and all of that. But then I'll be thinking to myself, it's a lot of bad women out here. Like, why is it that dudes want to crash out on a thing that they could actually utilize to be best for them? And I'm like, yo, let's get this fucking money together. You know, let's run it up. Let's take care of business. Let's, you know what I'm saying? I'm thinking like that. It's like. If, if, let's say a guy, right? Let's just say a random guy, and they be like, oh, man. Like, is it a shortage of women that you niggas see out here that y'all think is nice looking? Why you got to go after that one? Like, that is the one 
that you need to really, really zero in on as far as putting them in a position to really go and get this bag. It's, they going after that one because she just so happened to show them some attention, which is something most of these dudes usually don't get from women. Dog. That's crazy, bro. That's All she got to do is show them attention. And guess what? In, in their head, that resonates to, oh, she might fuck me. Not, oh, I can get a bag, you know what I'm saying? Or we can level up or what's, or, you know. No, no, they want a nut. <laughs> but, the old, but the old guys told us shit, told us this shit a long time ago. This ain't nothing new. Man, my, my granddaddy would say, boy, you need to use, you need to use the head on your shoulders, not the head between your goddamn legs. Yeah. 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 I don't know, bro. I'm just, it's weird to me. I mean, it, I guess it ain't weird in general and in, in the general public but it's weird because i've trained myself to be like that for so long i'm about a bag bro that's all I, like i i'm a zero focus i'm 100 percent focused on that thing and anything that distract me from that i gotta remove it from my life that's a gift that's a gift ad I don't know. Well, let's find out. Let me bring up some of these guys. I'm going to bring up Open Mike uh, first. What up, Mike? What's good? What's good? Chilling, chilling, my friend. What's the word? Big How y'all boys doing? Chilling, chilling. Man, chilling. Man. Not much. Hey, listen, man. You know, I appreciate what y'all boys doing. You know, when I was on a panel the other night, I took the position on relationships before marriage. <laughs> and I had to do some self. I had to do some self reflection. I was like, "Yo, listen, man, I'm dead ass wrong for that." Because you know, I had to compare the results. I had to look I'm like, "All right, what have I been doing? I've been doing this formula where I get in a relationship. I always been marriage minded, but I wasn't getting those results. Like basically, well, obviously, we have those conversations, then we start having sex, and then by the time we really try to get deep." We're, we're uh, going through certain challenges that I would have known if I just didn't put the cart before the horse. Yeah. So I'm like, why am I going to die on this hill of the wrong formula, man? You got to look at yourself and be like, wait, if it ain't working, it ain't working. Yeah. So I'm like, yo, I had to, I just had to uh, go back and correct and say, yo, I was wrong on that, taking that position. That's not something I want to market to the people. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I feel you. What do you think about that, Freezy? What you was wrong about again? Well, he was on a panel the other day, so that adds to the, you know, it's some additional context to that. Uh, okay. But he said that he had to reset and go back to the table and rethink some things. Hey, man, that's that means that you want to win, especially. You know, let me tell you something. Pause. But I, I love a man that, that. Let me tell you something. I love. I've grown to love men that admit when they made mistakes. Yeah. I'm gonna tell you why. Because now I know, oh, this nigga wanna win. You know what I'm saying? Like, 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 like I like listen, I respect highly intelligent dudes, right? But if you if I if I just hear you say one time, yeah, I could have rethought that, or yeah, I could have did that better. See, that lets me know that you're on the road to improvement. You're trying to see how to win on how to fine-tune this machine, you know what I'm saying, to get to a level of wealth that the average dude is not trying to get to him. When I say wealth, I'm not just talking about money, right? I'm talking yeah. about a way of life. You yeah. feel what I'm saying? Yeah. A, a way of life, like the shape of your marriage, the shape of your relationship, the shape of your network, shape of, you know, your business, all that shit, dog. And I think that's what Anton be trying to hone in on. It's not just about the money. It's about being thorough in every facet of your life, right? Anton be proud of himself on them that being un untouchable you niggas be trying to catch him y'all be trying to catch my dog but y'all they can catch it they can shoot they can shoot all they want but i'm cool with that like i mean you you, it's almost like you you can't hurt me with something that ain't there so i'm cool with that like that's why i'm so people wonder why i'm so matter of fact and they say that it's arrogant and all of that other stuff because i don't feel like i could be touched I don't, Freezy. I feel fucking invincible, bro. Because what can you come at me with? What can you What can you say? 
oh man, he been married to the same person. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you're right. And, okay, now what? You know, like what could you say? What could you possibly say? Ad, guess what? Can't though? say shit. The the way life is, the way this world is, especially the internet, right? The way this shit sought up, Ad. Mm -hmm. A bitch trying to catch you every day, every second of the day. It's a motherfucker. I don't care. Not not just you, just in general. Mm -hmm. Motherfuckers surfing the web to see how they can capitalize on your downfall. That's in Let general. Them shoot. Let them shoot all day long. I'm with that. I take that challenge. I'm okay with that. The only listen, you gotta worry when you ain't <laughs> when you got holes in your armor. I don't give a fuck. Listen, bro, if it was gonna happen, it would have already happened. At this point, I, I I welcome it. Where they at though? I'm with it. I'm with it. I'm with the smoke, 100. percent I don't know, Mike. You got anything else, big dog? And I appreciate you for coming on the platform. Yeah, yeah, 1,000. percent But nah, nah, just the um. Just, uh, so a little bit more context, right, on a little relationship before I married. So, yeah, I, I did that self-analysis. I looked at what results I was getting for what I was doing, not seeing it add up. And then, you know, I, I live in the Bahamas. So basically, I basically live in this community where, like, there's a whole bunch of nine-figure, eight-figure people that come here and kind of retire from different countries, right, like Spain, Australia, London, et cetera. Yeah. So basically, we do this poker night. Where everybody will host a poker night, right? You go to somebody's house, right? So basically, all these guys are in relationships. And when you go to their house, their wives, they have food set up. They make sure you're taken care of. Like the room is controlled, right? Mm -hmm. By that feminine energy. So you're looking, you're like, wait, you're looking at the man, like, wait, they have a high level of marriage. Like the marriage is operating at a high level. So I'm like, yo, if I know this is what I want, I got to. Be serious about how I'm going to go after that. I can't be trying to half step that, or I'm not going to get those level of results. Yeah. So it's one thing to get married, but it's one thing to do that operating at a high efficiency, right? So that's why, you know, and I'm reading this book, it's called Principles by Ray Dalio. Yeah, he I says, like Ray. In order to be great, yeah, you can't genius. compromise the other. So yeah, he has this, he has a statement where he's like, in order to be great, you can't compromise on the uncompromisable. So I, then I started thinking about it. I'm like, man, I, I thought about your position on that and why you're not compromising. I'm like, that allowed me to stress test my own position. So I just yeah. want to say I appreciate you, bro. Hey, man, I so appreciate you. Right now, kind of. But I think what I'm still uncertain about is that what is that new age quarter? What is that? What is that nowadays? You know what I mean? What does new, that even look like? New age courting? If, if it's not the quarter. Yeah, because it's not relationship, right? What is that path to pursue marriage or you don't even pursue it? I, don't, I don't believe personally in dating or courting for a person that you actually is looking to be in a long-term situation with. Like, I believe that the person that you should be with, you probably already know them or you're going to meet them organically and it's not going to come as a result of you trying to force something. So I just don't believe in going on dates and none, or none of that. I believe that uh, you date after you get married because the way that you find out who a person really is is by seeing them when they don't necessarily have any interest in you or they're not trying to bust it down for you. I could tell what a woman is like based off of how she is with her mother, whether she on time, how she treat her colleagues, how she interact with the people that she, you know, that, that she deal with on a regular basis? Is she the type of woman that's always seeking attention? You know, I could see that organically without her trying to impress me because if she trying to impress me, then she gonna put her best foot forward, right? And if she just putting her best foot forward, then that means she trying to get something. And that don't mean that she trying to just be organically real with me. You know what I'm saying? So when you get people in, they, in, their, in a state to where they could just show you who they really are and they're not, they're not trying to put on no airs and you can see how they operate in all of the, all environments without any kind of expectations from them. That's how you're able to see and source who it is that you're supposed to be with. So I don't believe in, 
entertaining all of that other shit that we, that we do within society today. I believe that everything is supposed to be organic and you already know who the person is that you're supposed to be with before you get with them. All right, all right. So I got a different method. And a lot of people don't like it because it forces them to be patient. It forces them to start working on themselves more. It forces them to leave at the, leave at the door the shit that you would normally do when you would say that you're in a relationship, the boyfriend girlfriend phase. I don't believe in none of that at all. I think that's all yeah, it is. It forces you to have fundamentals that you need in life any goddamn way. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I mean, I mean, listen, you are what you care about. You are what you actually care about, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I was looking at a a, a panel from Fresh and Fit. Uh, Candace Owen was on Fresh and Fit uh, a few days ago, and I think Myron from Fresh and Fit asked all all of the ladies who do sex work who was on the panel, how mm. many of y'all want to get married? Yeah. He asked all of them, how many of y'all want to get married? And surprisingly, every single one of those women on that show raised their hand, and they do sex work. Mm. They want to get married. Yeah, but they don't care enough. They don't care enough to make sure they get married in a in a healthy marriage. And they care more about you know making that money from sex work. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So it's all about what you care what you care about the most. What what it, and that trans that trans into what we're talking about as far as like a man being successful. What do you actually care about, right? Do you care? Do you care about? uh staying out of jail do you care about actually um uh not actually cultivating uh uh a uh, 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 a future that could be poisonous not just for you but for the family that that you that you that you're trying to build do you care about that do you care that much to even think that far into the future yeah right i'd be talking to these hoes i'd be like how much do you care do you care enough not to open your legs to these niggas just cause he got some money or he right or he pull up in the damn foreign? Do you care enough to look into the future or think enough into the future to think about that future little boy or that little girl that you might conceive and what kind of what kind of environment that you're gonna have them under? Do you care enough for that? Do you do you even care enough to think that far ahead? And the answer is most of the time, no, you don't. Mm -hmm. You don't. It ain't that deep for y'all. And so when I heard my dog up, when I heard my dog doing his monologue, I was like, this nigga, this nigga is a goddamn <laughs> Yo, you the coin. Hey, you no, know, listen, y'all. Freezy just love me, y'all. So he biased. No, I love Freezy you, nigga. Love but, <laughs> no, I love you, but at the same time, I dog, let me tell you something, bro. Those <laughs> niggas ain't got it. We don't, don't, don't. we gotta tell the fucking truth. Most of you niggas ain't got it. And, and listen, I hope you get offended out there. If y'all listening to Freeze, I hope you get offended. Freezy just love me, y'all. Don't listen to him. Man, <laughs> don't, don't let don't let that man fool y'all. Listen, let me tell y'all something. Listen. I'm 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 telling y'all this. I'm telling everybody this, men and women in the chat. Because I want you to understand how crucial your mind needs to be. I don't think you understand. I don't think your mind is where it needs to be. I don't think y'all understand this shit is fucking Mad Max in the Thunderdome. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Like this, like I, I don't think y'all understand what kind of mindset you need to have to win in society today. Y'all need to get y'all a friend like Freezy, bro. If y'all ain't got no real ones on y'all team like Freezy, y'all 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 ain't got no real ones at all. Real talk. All right, I appreciate you, Mike. Let me get some other people up here. Yeah. Yeah, I appreciate y'all boys, man. Y'all doing the right bro. thing. Uh, let me get Robert up here. Robert, you there? Yeah, Anton, I'm right here. What's going on with you? What up, big dog? How you feel? Man, it's all good. Hey, look. Uh, Freezy, what's going on, man? I ain't gonna disrespect you. I see you. On, I see you over there. What's up, big dog? Hey, nice first and foremost, thank both, thank both of y'all for the game. Hey, Anti, I ain't even gonna lie to you, man. You, you, you kind of pissed me off about a week and some change ago on, on. I think it's on Q, on Q, uh, <laughs> on Q. Like you know when she had a little podcast with the panel. But I'm finna bring it around. I'm finna get back to it though. But on the flip side, I, I 
on the flip side, nigga had to come back and respect you though. Big dog, I had ended up falling on some hard times. And the first thing a nigga did, I had uh I had Anton Daniels rock bottom. And you got to telling me, you know, you got to telling everybody how I think you and your girl was like on a twenty-five dollar a week allowance and going to the yeah, library yeah, and moving yeah, all that. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, like damn man. Cause you was like, fuck Compton. I was like, oh, this nigga pushing my buttons. I'm like, I ain't gonna get a move. No. <laughs> you remember that? You remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I was trying to make a point. Like, you know, the, the culture is different. Nevertheless, um, March 1st, I came into some little hard times or whatever. I mean, I'm kind of recession insulated. You know, you yeah. said get your property values up. My properties here do really well. But no, a nigga just wanted to reach out and say, you know what? Hey, I'm glad you post that video because, dog, it makes sense. And then come back tonight when you said, you know, focus on your North Star. Like, yeah. really focus on your why. Like, yeah, yeah. my initial why was... All right, I got my twin daughters. If I could do eighty three fifty passive a month, then cool. That's a hundred k after after everything. What what um what what was it? so the original reason why you was mad was because of Compton? No 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 no. So we, I guess I guess we was talking. Well, y'all was talking about like uh dudes being like weird, and I was trying to explain to you the culture, like because you you always say Atlanta ain't real. Mm -hmm. Well. Atlanta really ain't real. I mean, I got property down there. That shit ain't real, but it make me funny though. But, <laughs> but um, you said Atlanta not real, and what I was telling you was like their culture is a little different from, you know what what we find acceptable in like uh, L.A. Well, I don't speak on L.A. Well, what we would find in like a L.A. or like a Detroit. Not necessarily speaking on your politics. And I guess you wanted to go with something. He was like, fuck Compton. I was like, this nigga pile of ticket. And he was like, you need to get your property values right. And I'm like, nigga, all my doors cash flow. What you talking about? I was, like, I was like, let me step back from this podcast from a little bit. You know, if that's how you feel, fuck him. That's how you feel. But at the same time, I had to double back because I was like, I remember hearing you say something. Like, man, let me go back and pay attention to that. Like, and see if this man really has some valid points. And big dog, I ain't gonna stunt. You did, and I gotta, you know, nigga, respect that, my nigga. Like, I hey, listen, I, I, um, I, I appreciate you, but I appreciate you because, um, I think that it's it's cool that we can disagree or had differences of opinions and perspectives, um, you know what I'm saying, and still be able to remove our emotions so that we can see whether or not it actually makes sense or not. You know what I'm saying? Because we we still not going to agree on 100% of everything. You know what I'm saying? So, but see, for me, one of the things I respect is that, you know, when we remove our emotions, because emotions is cool because everybody got emotions, but we, we got to remove our emotions so that we can start to figure out what the meat is. You know what I'm saying? The only thing that matters yeah. is the results for me. You know what I'm exactly. saying? And so the context, a lot of times when I say shit like, fuck this or whatever, a lot of it just be like, yo, some of the stuff that we value or we put stock in is not important. If somebody say, for example, uh, fuck Detroit, for me, I want to know the context by which they saying it. You know what I'm saying? Maybe the person that they talking to is repping it, but they repping it so tough, but they don't necessarily got no property in it. And so it's almost like, nigga, why are you putting so much stock into something that you ain't, you ain't even got no money in? You know what I'm saying? Or... You know, I but see that niggas. wasn't the context. No, 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 no. I, I'm not saying for you specifically. Oh, okay. I'm okay. using that as a hypothetical example to just illustrate that context matters a lot of times. And I'm trying to always understand what the purpose is or the point is of what they're saying. You know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, I feel you, though. I feel you. Separately from that, I feel you, though. No, outside of that, I mean, I. I ain't want to, I mean, I, I come up in the shit. So if a nigga say fuck a city, so what? I mean, chances yeah. are I got property in your city. Nigga, I'll buy yeah, your yeah, mama yeah. house, put a restraining order on you so you can't yeah. come back. I'm like that. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, no, on, on, on some real shit, niggas just was calling to say, like, like, hey, I really appreciate your content. Like, especially what you said today about having your North Star and you got to be willing to tell everybody everywhere, like, if you got that burning desire and you really want to get it, you, yeah. you got to be willing to tell your mama, hey, yeah, mama, that's true. I love you, but you got to roll. Like, I got to get to where it is I got to get because I got things to do. And especially with me having my daughters, that's how I am. I done lost so many friends and family on my road to success, man. I'm yeah. here, 
I didn't hit a rough patch, but I'm still Nah, you're gonna come out of that shit. That's that's temporary, bro. Yeah, so I'm gonna tap into your Patreon. I just gotta find some time, man. I'll be taking I ain't going going nowhere, bro. I ain't going nowhere. I'll be here. We gonna we gonna be rocking till the wheels fall off, bro. I'm with that. I'm on a I'm on a second the what you say is two types, people who ain't got it together and people who trying to get to that next level. Like I'm trying to reach that like I hit that first hundred thousand, but god damn it's difficult to get that second man it so, get it, it get easier um well we'll talk about it we'll, we'll talk about it all right man i appreciate y'all hey freezy man hey appreciate your game and insight too big dog y'all have I a good night it. fellas thank you my game. friend all right let me uh bring up cast their crown inc what up cast their crown peace what's going on with y'all y'all hear me well yeah, for sure. What's the word, big dog? All right. Yeah, I'm on the. I'm on the um, traveling at the moment, so pardon me if you get the sounds. But nevertheless, the vibe was too tight. I couldn't let it go. So I had to call and show some support. Uh, definitely encourage y'all to keep doing the right thing because I always like to rock with you guys. When you'll have your shows Wednesdays, is usually the best time for me to catch you. Or sometimes I have to catch the playbacks. Um. But it's something specifically that you said, Anton, that resonates with me. And it's basically along the lines of protecting your investment, whatever that one thing is. And I have a son, and my son just turned 21. Uh, and he was hella immature. Congratulations, hella immature. bro. And he was, yeah, thank you, sir. I definitely appreciate that. And that boy, that boy became a man because his mother and I got married 22 years ago. So, you know, we raised him, we did our best, but we recognized as he reached around 18, 19, him being home, he was just kind of being too dependent on us, using us as a crutch. And we couldn't necessarily provide the outside uh, resources for him to find his independence and mature. So he had to go, you know, he had to go out of the house, but he went out of the house for some form of protection. He wasn't alone, not like he was kicked out because uh, we had an apartment. So instead of us staying with us in the house, he then moved into that apartment. And once he moved into that apartment, it was a different city, but there was a network there for him to be responsible. My father was in the same city with him. So now my father was able to help him and encourage him and you know coach him on how to do the right things and enter into manhood. So, you know, again, this is just an example of a particular investment because you got to invest into your children so they carry the torch properly and respect the household in which they come from. And he's doing a wonderful job, you know? He's doing a real wonderful job. He makes me proud because this is a guy who is, I mean, like, just silly, you know what I mean? So to see him turn around and be focused, he's working now. He's working on his actual, not just his occupation, his nine to five, but also trying to materialize his desires and his skills so he can put more into his talent. So when he was speaking about focusing in on that one thing and not allowing anything to distract you or set you aside from that one thing, staying focused and having that discipline and seeing him as a young man, it gives me some sense of security to understand that in the future, He's not going to be caught up in the bad situations like so many of our young men get caught up in because they have no sense of direction. We just leaving them outside to just play the fool. And then they come home with stupid prizes from playing stupid games. Yep, that's I what agree. we want to call culture, but there's nothing cultural about it. I agree with you. What do you think about this, Freezy? Man, train up a child in the way they should go. And when they get, become a man, they would not depart from it. A lot of the reason why these dudes and these women be crashing out, and not in all cases, but y'all just want not raised right. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to tell you. You just want, you just want raised right. You wasn't equipped with the, you wasn't given the tools, you know what I'm saying, to go forward in life to, yeah. to, to, to be successful. I mean, let's just call a spade a spade. You feel what I'm saying? And so what you just what you just expressed and what you just described is how how vital it is to you know to equip your child with the necessary tools of life man so they so you can trust them with, with them not even being in your presence you said that you said your your son moved to a different city when he moved into the apartment yes sir yes yeah, sir different state different you know? city different part of the country 
You feel comfortable? You feel comfortable with your uh your son making good decisions? Yes, sir. I was just I just spent ten days with him. So the, the rest of the family, you know, my wife and the other kids, I left house to be with him because he turned twenty one. So I spent like ten days with him uh to you know keep a watchful eye on him also see how he's maturing hearing the things he would say to me like oh dad i got this responsibility i gotta go do this i got this appointment i gotta make you know so just to be around him so i'm, I'm definitely happy i'm definitely happy well, because well, he's also well, let me carrying tell you this. my name People, let me tell you something a lot of these woke activists these uh these uh pro-black you know these uh what's it called the pan-african motherfuckers right a lot of them, mm -hmm. they get on people yeah. like Jay Z. <laughs> they get on people like uh, uh, you know, uh, successful, successful entertainers that they feel like don't give back to their neighborhoods, to their community. You know what is the most valuable thing somebody could do for their community? Raise your motherfucking kids right. That's a fact. That's a we we forget. Listen, we we forget all about that. You know what I'm saying? We we want Jay Z to give us a million dollars. You know, get we we want we want uh LeBron James to build us a community center. No, no, raise your damn kids right. What about that? That's a fact. That's a whole fact. That's stop giving them over to the state. Stop giving your children over to the state. I got a background in education. That's nothing but an institution to lead your kids to crashing out that's not in favor of our children at all and a big problem with these activists is that we as a community we don't have any morality clause on them so we allow them to do whatever say whatever and look just as nonsensical as everybody else and it's okay because they you know they got a little word salad and they they, they spew their nonsense and we're okay with that but raising up your kids the way you said uh proverbs 22 and 6 i believe that's what it was that you quoted um that truly is the best because that's how the community is stabilized by strong households yep. if your household is dysfunctional the community is going to be dysfunctional yeah, you give your children about, over I ain't the state worry about your child uh 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 hiding in my damn bushes <laughs> yeah <laughs> calculating when i'm gonna unlock my damn door you feel me yeah man? yeah exactly okay they're gonna come in exactly and exactly and i want to say to so that same boy that same boy he told me when he was 19 he was like dad i seen my first uh drug transaction in the street mm. and i thought about it and i was like this boy lived 19 years in a major city and the first time he saw one was at 19. i was so thankful to god for that yeah because i know coming up i've seen paraphernalia everywhere i've yeah. seen it firsthand you know I seen it, so it was like he was being protected to stay away from it. So when he was out spending his time going from school back and forth, he already identified what danger was. It just so happened that, you know, now we just saw him. He ain't have nothing to do with it. It just so happened to be the location of which he was at when he was traveling. He just so happened to see it. But, you know, that's how we keep our children's innocence. We want them to be street not just street articulate and wise but we want them to be street we want them to be negative we want them to be torn down and be rough and rugged and they five years old yeah six years old you want them to be sassy and nasty and slick with the mouth and talk to their mama any old type of way and you want your son to be the man of the house because you don't want your father in the house you want your son to be the man of the house because you can you can enable him with gifts by spoiling him so that's how really you controlling him. He think he got it like that, but you really controlling him and keeping him away from the things he actually needs. So, you know. I appreciate I, you, I, Cass, I man. You, you, you definitely yeah, a man. Thank you for stopping through, big dog. For real. Definitely. Thanks, and, and that's why I got I to got, I got mesh with you guys. You know, I got to mesh with you guys because I, I see in y'all what it is that I'm looking for. You know, so what I'm looking to do and what I'm looking to build on y'all y'all provide that energy and y'all provide that vibration so thank you got you. one that's going to be here supporting y'all i appreciate you bro thank you bro for continuing to rock with us it's very important right, definitely y'all right. definitely. be easy man thank you bro sure. i'm gonna go to don p and then i'm gonna go to slimmy let me see what up don <coughs> yo what up big dog chilling chilling what's the word big bro what's going on what up freezy what up freezy freezy my knees 
Yo, so a couple of weeks ago, I had I had hit you up, uh, and you was like join the Patreon, and then like last week I joined actually. Um, but I'm still kind of lost in like where I should start. You know what I mean? Like I, I, we was just talking. I was like, I had came into some bread, but I wasn't gonna fuck with no. So I'm my bad about the language, but I wasn't gonna you say what you want to say. No yeah, or, or tweak, go tweak it off, you know, trick off like type shit. I was I was more interested in like doing something intelligent. Did you so, uh, uh yeah did you look at the first stock club in the beginning of the year in January? No, nah, I didn't get okay. That's what I, that's why I should start I bet start in January. Start in the first stock okay. club and then work your way through them and then just go and see the different you know, and then just continue to browse through and see the different videos and then see how it is that you wanna um attack it because it's different content for different people right depending on what you're trying to do is content for people in corporate content for people from an investment perspective content when it comes to entrepreneurial uh endeavors uh i i show my receipts i show the things that i break down and all of that right so it just depends on where you want to you know what you're interested in i would suggest that you start at the, st the first start club stock club at the beginning of the year in january um because what i did was I broke down on a very, very fundamental level from a starter's perspective of what my investment strategy is, how I go about looking at things. I broke down the charts and I did all of that. And and it was a um, you know, it was a dope live stream that I re-uploaded. So I would start there if I was you. I bet. Thanks. Good luck. And then uh one other thing, it was funny. Uh What's the uh what's the beef with Dane? What's what's like what what do you really what do you really dislike in Dame so much? That um, you think I just think that Dame is corny and that you know he parade himself around to be a real one, but I think it's all a facade. I think he's trying to save face from the fact that he's not really doing as well as he should have been doing. Uh, and I'm not one to count somebody's pocket, so that's not even a part of this conversation. Um, I don't like the way they do business. No, nah. I think nah, I, think I that agree I, that uh, I agree. If, if you if favorite. you in the room with Jay Z, my bad. No, no, if no. You're in I the just room with Jay Z. Go ahead, go ahead. No, nah, if you're in the room with Jay Z and you you was doing business with him, you it should be no way that you should be no at way. a level of business. No. Yeah, yeah, I agree but with for that. Other people that, still we, be we, in Jay Z's sphere of influence and still be doing business with him. And nobody does business with Dame twice. It's crazy. Well, even and even if you wasn't doing business with Jay Z directly, just like the way that your your money should be coming should be at a different level. You shouldn't be like still at the same level or lower than what you were doing before you was associated with him. Sort of, you know what I'm saying? So I yeah, could, that I, I could I, agree with I, you. I don't all. think that Dame is not smart. I think that he's not wise. And I think that um, he talks a lot about and holds everybody else accountable, but I've never, ever seen him actually hold himself accountable. And that's a red flag to me. When everybody else is always wrong and you ain't never been wrong, then that's a red flag for me. No, nah, I agree with you on that. I, I can see it from that point of view. It's just, I was like, I was just like, damn, my band going hard at Dame. And I, because I'm a because fan. very few people want to actually call a spade a spade. And see, one thing about me is I'm never going to bite my tongue. I'm just going to be real. Like, I, if, if I'm a review it, I'm going to keep it 100. Or I'm going to preface it by saying that I might be a little bit biased on this one. Because I know this person in real yeah. life, the ability to be able to call them behind the scenes. And, so that's different. But the Steve Stout. <clears throat> and the Steve Stout stuff was, too, was funny to me, too, though. Because, like. Just listening to like Nas lyrics on Lord and Mercy, he was just saying how he like lost trust for Steve Stout because he because like I, Steve I Stout brought song, him Lord, in. And, I know the whole song. Lord have mercy, Jesus Christ, he's just nice. Jesus Christ, he's he just not like against. He was like lost much trust for Steve Stout. Man, you know, but, but see, that was at a that was at a time, right? I mean, I know the whole, listen, I'm a hip hop head. Lord have mercy, Jesus Christ, he's just nice. He just sliced like a Gensu. Look like at the that I've been through. It's the last real nigga alive. 
that's official. It's like official. I know the I know the whole album. I know the Godson album. I know the I know all of that shit. So you you talking to a, a hip hop head? Like I understand the whole history behind it. Um. So so I'm familiar with everything that's that's going on and all of the stuff that they reference. I'm 100 percent familiar with it. So you ain't know I knew that. You ain't know I was gonna quote that to you, did did you? No, no, no. I didn't say you wasn't. I, I was fucking with you about it in the chat when you was like standing up for Steve Stout. I'm not. I'm a Chicago I'm nigga, but see, bro. That's we, the thing. I'm not standing up close. for Steve Stout at all. But what I am saying is that um, it seemed like everybody passed Dame up, and everybody is doing incredibly well. That's just weird to me. Even when people have mishaps, even when people had different beefs, somehow, some way, they fixed it. Or they made it right because everybody makes mistakes or people have disagreements or whatever or beefs or whatever. But it seemed like he the only one. He the only one that never grew up. Like everybody fucked up. Everybody was young. Everybody was getting money, whatever. But he the only one that never grew up and he still act like a child. Nah, you right. You right. And <laughs> it, it just kind of sad to see because I held him in such high regard because some of the moves like he was right. Like the um, yeah, them sweaters crazy. I agree. Uh, it's some biggie <laughs> shit. You, you got you got some biggie shit going on. You you, you fooling out. You looking like I just I just do sweaters. what I want to do, man. Hey, man, listen. I appreciate nah, you, Don. I respect it coming through, big dog. Nah, thank you for having me, bro. Thank you, bro. Appreciate you, bro. Oh shit, Slimmy, call back in, bro. I made a mistake and hit the button. So let me call back in, bro. Bro, Mr. Stepper, what's happening? Hello. Hey, what's up, big hey, what's guy? What's up? the word? You got What's up, what's up, Mr. Shepard? Can you hear me? Yeah, you got to. Yeah, you got to turn it down. myself. I hear myself. I'll turn it down. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How that sound? Uh, uh, I can still hear I myself. I can still hear myself. If you can hear, you echo, can hear echo, 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 echo. Echo cancel. Echo cancel. That'll probably be help. Let me see. What the hell? Probably got it. Probably got it. Let me see. I'm just gonna. Let me check this. I don't know. Uh, you still hearing yourself? Uh. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. Try to leave and then come Try back. Let me get my dog Slimmy. Slimmy. What up, Slimmy? Slim. What up, my guys? What's up with y'all? What up, big dog? <laughs> What's the word? Hey, shit, man. I, 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 I ain't feel so good earlier, Freezy, so I was drinking my tea. Man, I, nah, it's all good, bro. I see um, you in there, man. Yeah, man. What's up with my guys, though, man? Chilling, man. I'm slow motion, bro. Trying to figure it out, bro. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm turning the corner on Dane, man. I'm, I'm, I, I, I you know what? <laughs> when I talk oh, for real, cause the only time I'm suspect about it is he keep, he keep bringing up that smack shit, man. Like as a grown man, like you can't keep bringing that shit up. Dog, like, I just don't have the same level of, of regard for him as everybody else, and I'm just trying to figure out what the allure is. Well, and maybe it's maybe it's me. Maybe I'm confused, but I don't know what the allure is, bro. I'm trying to figure out what that is. It was a part of an elite time, you know, and, and that was instrumental in hip hop. So, you know, it's just like people. Some people still don't want to let Pump Daddy go. You know what I'm saying? They still trying to hold on. They still they still don't see the the wrong that 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 Diddy doing. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And I'm not I'm, I'm not here to condemn or uplift any of these dudes, but in the same in the same light, it's just like man. Ain't no way you gonna keep talking about how you smack this dude, like, because like so. For instance, anytime like you growing, you're not gonna bring up an immature moment that you have. Yeah, like grown up. It's just like when when like so. Every time I used to watch Mav battle somebody, like he battled he battled the dude Dose that he that he punched. Mm -hmm. They battled again. He still was talking about punching him in the first battle. Yeah, I know. I remember it. And then he talked about Sirius Jones. They, he's talking about punching him again. It's just like, yo, bro, he like y'all niggas really don't be growing up, man. That was until Calico came up there and exposed him, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
so it's I think, just like, I think when Dame, I think when Dame appeared on the Breakfast, the Bref, Breakfast Club that one time, it was like a mm. classic episode when he was uh, saying, "If you're not a boss, you're nothing." You know, he was telling um, Charlemagne the God and and uh, was it Envy? He was telling them, you know, you, "If you're not a boss, you know, it don't mean nothing. You work for somebody." And I think. He ran with that. That shit was that. wild, bro. I, I ain't never heard of that jump before. I mean, I heard him say it, but I thought I disagreed thoroughly with that. Man, everybody yeah, but I think he it. ran with that narrative because a lot of he, he that that's all he preaches now, right? He preaches if you're not a boss, and you know, he, I think he got a clothing brand called CEO now. And he just ran it. He just ran it with that narrative, right? So, listen, the goal is to make money. Yeah. Fuck what everybody else is talking about. The goal is to make money. I don't know what he's talking about, bro. They take pieces and parts to get there. Everybody can't be a boss. Everybody yeah. can't be a boss. And 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 like so that that brings me to what y'all was talking about earlier with the with the women. Like you gotta have some good women on your side, man. Like in order to be truly successful, you gotta have women. And you gotta be willing to have a dick discipline to not deal with certain women to really see who they are to really see who got your back. Yeah. A lot of dudes fumbling good women because they try to sleep with them. And yeah, I agree. I think that you got to pick and choose the women that I, I don't know, man. I I just think that dudes are so fucking pussy hungry, and anything yeah. anybody it just go, bro. And it's just like, yo, slow down for a second, bro. Just pause for one second. You know what I'm saying? You'll be all right. Oh, and I remember I was on here talking about some of my homegirls. It was either on here or or on a, or on no cap. Yeah, and I somebody in the chat saying, "Oh, this nigga friend zone." I'm like, "No, this is not no friend zone. These women that really fuck with me genuinely for who I am." Yeah, that's true. Friend zone. That's hard to come by. People who genuinely yeah, rock just for that's who you fact. are. That's yeah. hard to come. By. People don't really realize how valuable that is. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like that's that <clears throat> that's currency. That's real currency right there. It you is. It is. I genuinely. <laughs> People don't really realize how much money me and Q got together. Man. They have no fucking clue the amount of money that me and Q have made together. Because you building a village. Building yeah, it's just like, shit, man. People people is crazy, bro. Yeah, man. And crazy. Yeah, like, dudes got to dudes got to with the, with the small head or the, and start thinking with the big head. Like, literally. Like that shit, that shit. I just man. like I like money more than I like pussy, bro. Yeah, <laughs> with some more money. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Yeah, man. man I just I, I always like money more than I like pussy. So yes, I have my priority uh, straight. Hey, I seen you tap out on the deal, man, on that Meek Mill academic shit uh, yesterday, bro. You want fucking man? With at you, some man. point, you got to put that shit up, bro. These niggas, <laughs> these hey, niggas. The niggas Beating a dead horse, man. They just keep going back and forth, man, over nothing. Somebody gonna get hurt, and then everybody and it don't hurt. make no sense, man. They even know. I mean, I don't know. Maybe they making money from it or something. I don't know, but it's just like okay. So you address it. I feel it the first couple times, even three times. Okay, you got some personal issues with it, but then at some point, it's like, damn, like we not yeah. gonna move on from this joke. Yeah, and it's just like when somebody get hurt, then everybody gonna be like, oh, y'all was stupid. Yeah, y'all should have just squashed it a long time ago. Cause yeah, what? Nothing. Nothing. Yep, I agree. Yeah, man. But yeah. I'll just call it real quick. Shout out to Slim. I appreciate Shout out to Slim. Uh, I was gonna hey, say hey, Slimmy. Hey, uh, hey, definitely. Hmm? Definitely Grab lost it. to the DM, bro. Slim. He <laughs> said I lost <laughs> to who? I said you ghost in the DM, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I check it. I just be checking it so spar sparingly, like. I just don't be up on that. I'll be so focused on other stuff. I don't even be checking on social media like that. I feel you. What was you saying, Freezy? My bad, bro. No, going back to what you were saying about that friend zone uh, thing, right? I think a lot of these guys, they they be throwing it around nowadays just to for a shaming tactic. They don't even understand. Like, it's levels to this shit. You know, yeah, you in the friend zone if you if you just simply trying to trying to have sex and and uh you just going along just to get along and you wasting a lot of time yeah i understand that but if i got a network and a lot of my network is females 
and we and especially if we if we getting money we get to the bag I'm not finna listen to no corny ass dude talking about oh he in the friend zone bro shut the fuck up bro yeah, Max. Max. yeah. I don't care what yeah. we're talking about we getting a bag for sure a hundred percent bro all right Slimmy I appreciate you big dog you already know my guys hey I'm gonna holla at y'all man thank y'all you be here. appreciate y'all any final words Freezy Freezy you seem like uh, Fear guys that I be rocking that I have on my Coogee sweater today, bro. What you have? What you see? Let me see. My fear guys. Oh, them bitches hard. Yeah, you ain't never seen these before, son. I got, I seen them. I got the black ones, the all black. Oh ones. yeah, yeah, yeah. I got the black ones in there too. Yeah, yeah. I got the all black ones, man. But I wanted a lot. I wanted the loud color ones. I wanted the um. I got the green ones, the yellow ones, the the. That's the ones I wanted. Orange I wanted ones, the green. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love these mugs, bro. You know, I buy my shit to wear them. I buy my cars to drive them, my, my clothes to wear it. I don't be preserving shit, bro. I, I do what I want to do. Bro, I ain't going to lie. Uh, Since we talking about sneakers, Adidas did like a sh uh, shock drop of the the Yeezy phone runners, right? And I know a lot of people think they're ugly. I seen that. Yo, I, I got me a couple of pair, bro. I love the motherfucker. I be walking around the house. <laughs> I love me some Yeezy. I don't care if Yeezy is not with Adidas. I love them phone runners, dog. I just be walking around the house in them bitches, man. Yeah, but man. No, this been a, a excellent, um, a excellent live stream pertaining to focus, right? Like, and I, I, I don't want people to forget. That to me, and Anton might disagree with me, but I think it's the level of focus that you need in order to, uh, especially the level of success that Anton has reached. I I just think that I don't know. Maybe it's not a gift. Maybe maybe it's just you know you have to actually hone in so much, and and the focus has to be so at, at so much at a high level. Mm -hmm. I don't think a lot of people will ascertain it. That that's probably what it is. I don't know. Maybe maybe I went too far as saying it's a gift, but I still think it's a gift. But that's how serious it is, though. You know, if you guys want to reach that level of success, you know, are you willing to have those those nights where you only sleep like two hours? Mm. Or you know, I, are you willing? What kind of sacrifices are 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 y'all willing to make? I'll be having them. Yeah. All day long. That just separate the men from the boys, though. <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? So yeah, for sure. But yeah, that's that's all I wanted to say, man. Shout out to shout out to the bag chasers. Shout out to the no cap crew. Make sure y'all go subscribe to No Captivity with Freezy. All right, and become a part of the no cap crew. For Anton, sure. I love you, bro. Thank I you. Love you too, bro. Me. Yeah, bro. Shout out to Freezy, my dog, Freezy. All right, so let me read some of these super chats, and then I'm going to get y'all up out of there. We got to do the Millionaire Morning Show in the morning. King Stennis says, we got to get your message to the masses. That's up to y'all. Are y'all sharing this with your friends and family? Send this out to everybody you know. Thanks for being a great example. Shout out to Chris Bow 777 Yashua says, Anton is right. Men have to be smart with who we lay with because in some states, they're passing laws for men to pay child support before the child is even born. Man, yo, we really need to have paternity tests at birth, for real. You ain't got a lie, Craig, says Anton hosted meetup during NFL draft week. Maybe we'll do a rooftop. I don't know. I got to figure that out. It should be dope, though. It's going to be dope here in Detroit. NFL draft is in Detroit this year. Y'all getting money together because Q damn near got the same car Anton got out people. How y'all know what Q riding in? How y'all know we're Q riding in? <laughs> we all listen, everybody ride clean, everybody get money, everybody running up near me. Um Yeah, man, we running it up. Shout out to all of my friends and family, everybody that hold me down. Uh I appreciate y'all. I really do appreciate y'all. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. I'm gonna holler at y'all tomorrow, man. Till next time. Peace.